This week, sadly, there has been more evidence that racist incidents are increasing. Evidence collated by monitoring groups shows that in the last three or four days alone, attacks and abuse from Stoke to Stockton, from Dorset to the Clyde, can I ask the Prime Minister what monitoring systems he and the Home Secretary have put in place, what reports he's received from the police, and what extra resources are going to communities that have been targeted in these vile racist attacks that are taking place? Well, first, let me agree with the right honourable gentleman. These attacks are appalling and they need to stop. And it's right that everyone in this House and everyone on all sides of the referendum debate utterly condemns them. That is not what we do in Britain. Let me say that I reassured Prime Ministers, uh, countries of, such as Romania and Poland and the Czech Republic, who were concerned about this issue at the meeting that we had last night. So we do monitor these attacks and the Home Secretary gets regular reports. But I can tell the House that we will be publishing a new action plan on tackling hate crime shortly to step up our response. We want new steps to boost reporting of hate crime and supporting victims, new CPS guidance to prosecutors on racially aggravated crime, a new fund for protective security measures at potentially vulnerable institutions, and additional funding to community organisations so they can tackle hate crime. Whatever we can do, we will do to drive these appalling hate crimes out of our country. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn. I thank the Prime Minister for that answer. Last Thursday, Mr Speaker, was a rejection of the status quo, a status quo that clearly isn't delivering. There are now 13.5 million people living in poverty in Britain, up 300,000 in the last year. Four and a half million people in England and Wales alone are in insecure work, and two-thirds of children in poverty are living in households where at least one adult is in work. The Prime Minister has two months left. Will he leave a one-nation legacy? And will that One Nation legacy, and will that One Nation legacy be the scrapping of the bedroom tax, the banning of zero hours contracts, and cancelling of the cuts to universal credit? Where, where, where I would agree with the right honourable gentleman is, of course. We need to do more to tackle poverty. We need to do more to spread wealth and opportunity. But to try and pretend that last Thursday's vote was a result of the state of the British economy is complete nonsense. The British economy is incomparably stronger than it was six years ago. We all have to reflect on our role in the referendum campaign. I know the Honourable Gentleman says he put his back into it. All I'd say is I'd hate to see him when he's not trying. Mr Speaker, government figures figures released yesterday show the number of children living in poverty has jumped by 200,000 in a year to a total now, a disgraceful total, of 3.9 million children in this country living in poverty. Does he not think he should at the very least apologise to them? and the parents that have been failed by his government and do something about it so that we do reduce the levels of child poverty in this country. If he wants to deal with the figures, let me give them to him. Income and inequality has gone down. Average incomes have grown at their fastest rate since 2001. He asks about poverty. There are 300,000 fewer people in relative poverty since 2010. Half a million fewer people in absolute poverty since 2010. Look, if he's looking for excuses about why the side he and I were on about the referendum, frankly, he should look somewhere else. And I have to say to the honourable gentleman, he talks about job insecurity and my two months to go. It might be in my party's interest for him to sit there. It's not in the national interest. And I would say, for heaven's sake, man, go. Yeah.